This is News 8 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for watching News 8 Now at Noon. I'm Ken Kozarowski. La Crosse's Common Council meets tonight at 6 p.m., and one of the top items to be covered is the future of the Harry J. Olson Center. Last week, the city's Finance and Personnel Committee considered a resolution to sell the building to the seniors for a dollar, but the city would still be able to use the building as a polling place. And that committee ultimately referred it to tonight's full Common Council meeting. Now, sale negotiations between the Senior Center residents and the Common Council have been going on for six years. And tonight's posted agenda says the Council could go into closed session to discuss this particular matter. And by state law, the Council would have to go back into open session and announce any official action that was taken during that closed session. The Harry J. Olson Center, not the only item on the agenda. Others include the potential adoption of the city's 2022 Climate Action Plan. That plan's goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions community-wide by 40 to 50 percent below 2019 levels by the year 2030. It'll also rule on a plan to rezone a future four-story building in the Washburn neighborhood that would create 64 housing units and a 360-square-foot classroom or community facility open to the public. And it will discuss approving a State Department of Transportation grant to build the Wagon Wheel Trail connecting La Crosse and La Crescent. More items, of course, are on the agenda tonight, but the meeting is open to the public. All right, take a look at the past few hours. We started the day off at 35 degrees at 6 o'clock. We've not moved much. 34 degrees. We were there for 7 o'clock till now. Right now we're still sitting at 32 degrees. It feels like 22 out there. The winds are out of the northwest at 15 miles per hour. Humidity is sitting at 82%. We are seeing cloudy skies out there. I know, Clara, you're sitting at 30. Feels like 21 out there. Winds are out of the northwest at around 10 miles per hour. Other temperatures across the area. Some places still seeing temperatures in the 20s. Preston, you're at 24. Decor is at 28. 35 Prairie du Chien, 36 Bosqueville, 33 Sparta as well as Black River Falls. But again, with that wind, this is what you want to dress for if you have to go out. Look at Rochester. Down to 8 degrees already. 21 Eau Claire, 22 La Crosse, 22 Viroqua, uh, 29 over towards uh, Sparta, 27 Black River Falls. So the temperature trend, that 33 well, that's what we're going to see as we go into the afternoon hours. We'll go to 26 for Friday, 34 for Saturday. As we go into the next uh, several hours, the clouds, they're going to stay in play. Look at this. You can see the cloud cover right now in play. This is past six hours. What's happening is we're on the leading edge of a high pressure system on the back end of a low pressure system. So when we get in this type of pattern, that wind is really going to ramp up out of the north and northwest. Some places could see gusts as high as 20 to 25 miles per hour. Meanwhile, a different story across the southern portion of the U.S. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and go under the clouds. You can see what's going on over towards portions of Louisiana, New Orleans to be exact. Uh, seeing some heavy rain and thunderstorm activity. Same story over towards portions of Mississippi, going into portions of Alabama, even into Georgia, uh, seeing some thunderstorm activity as we speak. A matter of fact, portions of Alabama and Georgia, even southern and southeastern Mississippi, under a tornado watch, you can see the tornado warnings that's being uh, popping up right now across the central and southern portions of uh, Alabama. But closer to home today, like I said, we'll see temperatures in the 30s. Disregard this map in general because we reached our high at midnight, which was 35 degrees, and the temperatures will continue to fall throughout the day. We're going to stay cloudy as we go into the afternoon and evening hours by Friday morning. We'll stay mostly cloudy. The clouds will dissipate as we go into the afternoon and early evening hours, only to fire back up again. Highs tomorrow. We're only going into the 20s, folks. Low 20s towards Preston, otherwise mid 20s from Lady Smith down to Prairie to Sheen, Boscobel. I think you're going to be the big winner at 31 degrees. So the details of the first warm forecast for today, like I said, we already reached our high. This is going to be around 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll see cloudy skies. The temperatures will continue to fall with winds out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Some places seeing gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. There's temperatures in the upper 20s as we go into your evening hours with cloudy skies. Winds are going to stay out of the northwest as we go throughout the next several hours and the next eight days after Friday. We go to 34 on Saturday with mostly sunny skies. That's actually the pick of the weekend. Yeah, Sunday's going to be warmer, but we have that rain chance in the afternoon and the evening hours. Then we go to 41 on Monday with a 60% chance of rain, mostly cloudy skies and temperatures hovering around freezing for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Ken, one thing to note, mm -hmm. that 26, yeah, that's chilly on the eighth day, but that's actually where we should be for this time of year. Actually, 27 
is where you should be for this time of year. So this is going to feel like normal regardless. Okay. It's just these mid to upper 30s kind of spoiling me right now. I <sighs> wish that was consistent this time. Yeah. It's the most wonderful time of the year, my friend. <laughs> Eric Dean, thanks very you much. You bet. Let's switch back to the topic of news now. Looking broadly, the man charged with killing four University of Idaho students is set to appear in court today for a status hearing. The 28-year-old was arrested in Pennsylvania last month, Ryan Koberger. According to court documents, phone records put Koberger's phone near the home around the time of the killings. And investigators also got a DNA profile from the Koberger family that matched DNA on a knife sheath found at the scene. Koberger charged with four counts of first-degree murder, one count of burglary. He is being held without bail. President Biden's aides say they have found a second batch of classified materials from his time as vice president. This batch was located at a different location from the first batch of classified documents, which was discovered in November. In a press conference this morning, Biden says the documents were in a locked garage next to his Corvette. Republicans are calling for investigations and saying this is a double standard, making comparisons to the classified material found at former President Donald Trump's Florida home. Now, classified records are supposed to be stored in secure locations, and the Presidential Records Act says all White House records are to be given to the National Archives after an administration ends. Now, coming up at around 12.15 this afternoon, we will be taking you to a press conference with Attorney General Merrick Garland. The subject has not been announced by the Justice Department, but we expect this latest document discovery to be very intimately tied to it. Sticking with Capitol Hill, Congressman George Santos says he's not going anywhere despite pressure for him to resign. Four Republican congressmen from New York are now calling for Santos's resignation. Santos has already admitted he lied about his education, work history, and claims his grandparents fled the Holocaust. Now here's what he told reporters today outside his office. Um, I will not resign. I will be continuing to hold my office elected by the people. Santos said, he later said, if 142 people ask for me to resign, I'll resign. Now, it's not clear where Santos got that number 142, which is arbitrary as it relates to the House of Representatives. That is still unclear. Closer to home now, food is fuel. And for some families, it's too expensive. School lunch debt is skyrocketing nationwide, as well as right in La Crosse. The La Crosse School District guarantees kids have access to meals, but as our own Dua Israr found out, their families remain on the hook for the bill. 543 with all of our extra entrees. It's the calm before the rush at Central High School. I got a lot of good stuff here. Nearly every student's favorite class. Cheese bread today, got pizza. I think there's just no disputing that a child at school needs to be fed. But there's a heavy price tag hanging over every lunch period. For the past two years, a pandemic era program allowed every student to get free meals. But now that the program is over, schools are racking up debt over lunch. We're seeing it increase exponentially. This year, student lunch debt is already the highest it's been in more than five years. We're just under $17,000, and we're not quite halfway through the school year. La Crosse Schools nutritionist Marilyn Bolden says because students need to eat, that debt will continue to rise. Don't deny or withhold meals based on um, lack of funds. The district has relied on community donations to pay off lunch debt, but that money is never guaranteed. Budgets are, are tight, people are feeling it at home, and if students can't get the nutrition that they need at home, they come to school hungry, and hungry students can't learn. Students can grab snacks and non-perishables from donor-funded food pantries located throughout the district. I had students come in this morning when they saw that it was set up. It's a short-term solution. It can carry over from year to year. Bolden says until there's more state or federal aid, they will have to pay that if it's not cleared out by any other means. <laughs> Lunch debt is here to stay. Reporting in La Crosse, Dua Srar, News 8 Now. Thank you, Dua. And in November, Wisconsin Democrats did introduce a bill to provide universal free meals statewide, but it did not pass the Republican-controlled legislature. More news is coming up next. Stay with us. It's fast food and service with authentic Mexican flavor at Senor Villa. With fun daily specials and cold, refreshing margaritas you won't want to miss. Come to Senor Villa in La Crosse and on Alaska. Authentic Mexican food and flavor. Bag sale. 15% off. So I was thinking we could fix up a few things around here. 
new cordless drill so we can finally hang those pictures. LED bulbs, that'll help with the electric bill. Picked up some toothpaste for us. We always need batteries. New coat of paint for the mudroom. And finally, something to unclog that basement sink. The bag is back. Hurry in and get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag now at Menards. When Payne says, I'm here, I say, so are they. Just want to leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. A leave. Who do you take it for? Yes, I'm a smoker. And yes, I'm aware I should quit. I get pressure from everyone I love and everything around me. Smoking is really, really bad for you. Yet sometimes that pressure alone is enough to make me want to light up. The Wisconsin Tobacco Quit Line. No judgments, just free help and medications. Without the lectures, call the Wisconsin Tobacco Quit Line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Without the right start to your day, your morning could hit a wall. It's not the door. I got it. Belvita Breakfast Biscuits are baked with slow-release carbs and provide steady morning energy to help you rise and thrive. At Cooley Auto, we care about making buying and servicing your cars an effortless process. From our fair pricing to our friendly staff, we are accountable to the Cooley region and are now focused on offering you the best service possible with Cooley Auto Service Center. Cooley Auto Service Center is engaged in providing you with honest, affordable, and reliable service. Service you need, care you deserve. Find out more at CooleyAuto.com. Make it a family dinner night every Sunday at Senior Villa, where kids eat free, one per adult, open to close. And it's a menu you know they'll love. Senior Villa, authentic Mexican food and flavor in La Crosse and on Alaska. U.S. stocks closed out with more positive gains Wednesday. Chanel Call has the latest business headlines from New York. A new study in the journal BMJ may help put long COVID sufferers at ease. Researchers found most of the persistent symptoms that develop after a mild bout of the virus, including fatigue or shortness of breath, generally resolve within a year and don't lead to chronic long-term illness, especially for vaccinated patients. Scientists in China suggest a simple blood test may help pregnant women reduce their risk of serious complications. The screening was able to detect key changes in the the gut bacteria of patients who experienced preeclampsia or gestational diabetes and could provide an early warning system for moms to be. And just six minutes of high intensity exercise may help ward off cognitive decline. That's according to scientists in New Zealand who found brief but vigorous exercise routines, more so than lengthy ones, actually helped the body produce a special protein essential for brain formation, learning and memory. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. So that was our Med Day report. We will get Money Watch later on in the show, uh, potentially. But in the meantime, Attorney General Merrick Garland will make a statement from the Justice Department very shortly. The Justice Department didn't provide the topic of his remarks, but we will be taking you live to that presser because it is scheduled to begin around 12.15. It comes as President Biden is under scrutiny after roughly 10 documents with classification markings were discovered in his vice presidential office at a think tank in Washington, D.C. back on November 2nd. Now, the records discovered at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement were immediately turned over to the National Archives and Records Administration, and the Justice Department was notified, and that's according to the special counsel to the president, Richard Sauber. Garland asked the U.S. attorney in Chicago, John Lausch, to review the documents and examine how they ended up at the think tank. Lausch was appointed to the post by former President Trump. Sauber said in a statement that after the initial discovery, Mr. Biden's lawyers searched his residences in Wilmington and Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, and found a second smaller number of documents marked classified from the Obama administration. It was in a storage space in the garage at that Wilmington home. No documents found at that Railboat Beach property. We are taking you to that press conference in just a few minutes.